Former federal prosecutor Nima Romani is with us now. Why go into such vivid detail of that encounter in 2006, the alleged encounter? Well, it really wasn't necessary and frankly isn't relevant to the claims in this case. We're talking about whether the business records were false. And Judge Juan Marchand said that the prosecution can ask about the affair, but the defense failed to object to many of these questions or strike Daniels' testimony. That's why we heard those sordid details about Trump and Melania sleeping in separate rooms and the positions that Trump prefers and him having unprotected sex. Really unnecessary, sordid details that came out during trial yesterday. The jury is always looking to determine if a witness is credible or not, and the legal teams are trying to poke holes in each other's arguments. Has Stormy Daniels' testimony and story been consistent? Not at all. Here's someone that said that she wanted to tell her story. Well, she was paid $130,000 not to tell her story. And of course, she has been inconsistent over the decades. She's denied having the affair to talk shows and reporters. And now she's, of course, saying that the affair happened in graphic detail. And during the cross-examination yesterday, I think the defense did a very good job pointing out Daniels' financial motive to lie, both in terms of raising her own profile, but she owes Trump more than half a million dollars due to Trump being the prevailing party in her defamation lawsuit. Also in, in testimony this week and in the case, Trump's legal team argued for a mistrial. The judge ultimately denied it. On what grounds were they, were they saying that should happen? Trump's team argued that the motion for mistrial should be granted because of all these unnecessary details that came in. They were irrelevant. They were prejudicial. But under the law, if a defendant or a party fails to object, those objections are waived, both on appeal and on a mistrial motion, unless there is clear legal error. And I didn't see any here. This was a strategic legal mistake by the defense yesterday. Which way do you think the jury may be leaning? Based on what we've seen so far, again, we haven't yet heard from Michael Cohen. It's still early in the case, and of course, Cohen being the star witness, he has been impeached even before he's taken the stand. I think the prosecution is leading on the business records actually being false. I think the defense is going to have a tough time arguing that the $420,000 payments to Cohen were actually legal expenses. That being said, we know under New York law, that's just a misdemeanor unless the false records were in furtherance of or to cover up another crime. That's why the prosecution is arguing that it was related to election fraud or some other campaign finance violation. I don't think the prosecution is there yet, and there may be reasonable doubt. So they may be leading, but just on misdemeanor charges only. This gag order issue, Nima, has been front and center for this whole trial so far. The judge now threatening jail time if Trump continues to ignore the gag order. How likely is that? As we now hear, New York City Mayor Eric Adams says the city is ready if Trump does get sent to jail. Highly unlikely. Trump has violated the gag order 10 times. And even if he violates it another 10, 20, or 30 times, I don't think Judge Mershon has the stomach to actually imprison him. It would lead to mass protests, maybe even civil unrest. And this the logistical nightmare of sending Trump and Secret Service to Rikers Island or elsewhere. I think this is something that Judge Mershon wants to avoid at all costs. I think if push comes to shove, we may see something like home confinement in Trump Tower or some sort of adverse jury instruction where the judge tells the jurors that Trump continues to intentionally violate the order. But as far as jail or imprisonment, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, and one could argue that Trump would welcome the prospect of jail time, politically speaking. Uh, Nima Romani, thank you. Court is in recess today. It will resume with Stormy Daniels on the witness stand again tomorrow. Thanks for your time. Of course, thanks for having me. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis.